This man is Robinson. He works as a submarine captain for a company called Agora, which is a company engaged in finding and researching sunken ships at the bottom of the ocean. But on that day, Agora decides not to renew his contract on the grounds that they no longer need him. Robinson begs the company to keep him because he has been with the company for over a decade, but Agora has decided to fire him, and they will give him compensation money. Robinson's life is completely shattered after his wife chose to divorce and abandoned him because he was too concerned with his job over his own family, and now he has to lose the job. In his current state, Robinson doesn't dare meet his son and ex-wife because he doesn't want to spoil their happiness with their new family. The dismissal by the Agora company also happened to his two friends, Kirsten and Blackie who had been fired first. They meet at a cafe to discuss the dismissal and try to find a new job. Kirsten informs them that a year before he was fired, he had been assigned to the Black Sea and that they found something at a depth of 90 meters, which they believed to be the wreck of a Nazi submarine that sank on the high seas between Georgia and Russia during World War II. There is a rumor that the submarine was carrying a cargo of gold worth millions of dollars, but Agora was unable to find the treasure due to territorial disputes after the wars between Russia and Georgia broke out. Kirsten tries to convince Robinson and Blackie to find the gold together so that their lives will be better and they will be rich. Robinson and Blackie are intrigued by the idea, and the next day they meet a wealthy businessman named Lewis who was introduced by Kirsten and their old friend named Daniel, but Kirsten himself doesn't come because he is sick. They hope Lewis can fund their expedition to find the Nazi submarine. Robinson asks for 180,000 US dollars, and they will use the money to get a submarine and recruit several people with a composition of half British and half Russian because they will buy submarines made by the Soviet Union. On the other hand, the Russians definitely know more about the Black Sea. Lewis agrees to fund the expedition but with an agreement that he will get 40% if the gold is worth under $4 million and 20% if it is worth more than $4 million. Robinson agrees with the agreement and afterward, he immediately begins to recruit his friends with their respective skills to form a great team. When Robinson has recruited every crew to be part of his team, Kirsten suddenly disappears and never comes back or gives any news to him. Then Robinson meets a teenager named Tobin who is waiting for him at his apartment and claims to be Kirsten's friend. He informs Robinson that Kirsten had committed suicide due to depression and his illness. Robinson is shocked by the news, and he has no other choice but to bring in Tobin to replace Kirsten. When they arrive at the port, they are very surprised because the submarine they bought is an old submarine and looks like a submarine wreck. When Robinson goes to Palka, he finds three submarine escape suits, but he chooses not to tell anyone about the escape suit. The expedition finally starts, and this expedition is very risky because they have to keep diving underwater, and they are forced to turn off the radio to avoid the Russian Navy in the Black Sea. Then Robinson tells all his crew that if they manage to discover the Nazi treasure, everyone will receive an equal share of the 60% gold. Some people disagree with the division because they think it is really unfair and everyone should get a share according to their expertise. About your posts. The Russian crew also sees Tobin as a bad sign because they believe Tobin is a virgin and has no experience. Tobin always stares at a photo on his phone which makes Robinson curious and asks what he is looking at. Tobin shows the photo and tells Robinson that he will soon be a father because his girlfriend is pregnant with his child. A few days later, a dispute between them begins to arise when a troublemaker named Fraser deliberately spills the dishes made by the Russian crew who served as their chef. Blackie who serves as a translator between them, informs Robinson about the dispute that the British don't agree with the division that he made and they want more. Shortly after, another fight breaks out between Giddens and the Russian chef. It turns out that the two of them have made a bet, and Giddens has used their radio without Robinson's permission to find out whose number came out as the winner of the bet. Robinson is furious and immediately destroys the radio which is their only hope if the submarine sinks. Then Robinson makes it clear to all his crew that everyone will get an equal share, and he orders anyone who disagrees with the division he has made to get off the submarine immediately. Everyone is silent and finally returns to their respective posts. However, Fraser looks very upset and takes out his knife. Meanwhile, Tobin is assigned to help a Russian crew named Zaitsev fix a leak, but he forgets where to turn the handle and causes a new leak that hits Zaitsev in the face. Blackie scolds him for his carelessness and tells him to be careful. However, Fraser then comes and tries to defend Tobin. Blackie tries to explain what actually happened and tells Fraser that he is giving advice to Tobin. But unexpectedly, Fraser instead stabs Blackie with his knife. What have you done? Blackie falls down and accidentally drops oil into the engine that is being repaired by Zaitsev, causing a huge explosion and the submarine to fall down to the bottom of the ocean. After 18 hours of unconsciousness, Robinson finally wakes up, 
and he is shocked to see that Blackie and Giddens have burned to death. The British crew tells him what has happened and that the Russians have taken over the part of the submarine where their food is stored. They are furious and want to kill Fraser after he killed Blackie and ruined their plans. Robinson tries to meet the Russian crew and persuades them to revive the submarine together because they only have 36 hours before they all die. Fortunately, a Russian crew member named Morozov can speak English fluently and became the translator to replace Blackie. However, Morozov doubts if they can run the submarine again because now they are short of crew and the submarine's steering axle is badly damaged. Robinson asks Morozov to persuade Baba and Zaitsev to make peace because they are experts on sonar and machines. Baba and Zaitsev finally agree to work with them again, but Zaitsev promises to kill Fraser when they get to the surface. They try to make a sound by banging iron rods, and after a while, Baba is finally able to find something not far from their submarine. However, he isn't sure if it is a Nazi submarine or just an underwater dune. Fraser, Tobin, and Peters decide to dive to ascertain if it's a submarine or something else. After diving 100 meters they find a sand dune, and Fraser is pretty sure it isn't a submarine but just a dune because the ground is moving. They are initially desperate and think their mission has failed, but when Tobin tries to dig into the sand, he finds something like the Nazi symbol. It turns out to be a Nazi submarine that has been buried by the sand. They immediately enter the submarine and find many skulls of Nazi soldiers inside. After going through every hatch on the submarine, Fraser finally discovers the gold they are looking for. All the gold has a total weight of 4 tons, and they take all the gold to the submarine using a winch. They initially don't find any problems, but the gold is too heavy which causes some of the gold to start falling. Peters tries to hold it so that all the gold will not fall into the abyss. Unfortunately, he slips and falls into the abyss after the safety rope on his body breaks due to being run over by a wheel. Tobin and Fraser can't save him and are forced to return to the submarine. Although they manage to get the gold, the situation becomes difficult because to run the submarine they need at least nine people. They force Daniel to replace Reynolds, but Daniel refuses and asks Robinson to have a secret conversation. Daniel tells Robinson that all of this has been arranged by the Agora company. From their dismissal to a wealthy businessman named Lewis which was actually just part of the Agora scenario. Daniel also tells Robinson that Kirsten is still alive and didn't kill himself, but he was paid $30,000 to persuade him and Blackie to take an interest in the gold. And if they manage to find the Nazi gold, Agora and the Russian Navy will wait for them on the surface and will arrest Robinson and all his crews for theft. Oh, damn, I said I'm sorry. Everyone is furious and wants to kill Daniel after knowing that they have been framed by Agora, but Robinson has locked him in a room to protect him because they have lost a lot of crew and maybe they will need him. Robinson changes his plans and has the idea of going to the north of Turkey because the Russian Navy is in the east and they will not dare to enter the territory of another country. Robinson assures them all that they can definitely do it and he doesn't want to go home empty-handed. On the other hand, the gold they got turns out to be more than they previously thought, and now all the gold is theirs without having to share it with the Agora. They only have 14 hours before the submarine's battery is completely discharged. In the middle of the journey, they encounter a big problem because it turns out that they have entered shallow water that is risky to pass through, and they are already in front of a valley that is only 100 meters wide. Morozov tells Robinson to turn around while Fraser wants them to all give up and rise to the surface immediately. Fraser gets into an argument with Robinson and says all the gold has made Robinson crazy. Robinson takes his gun and warns all the crew to return to their respective posts. He gives the order to risk crossing the narrow valley as it will only take them an hour to cross it instead of going around it which would take much longer. But again, Daniel begins to provoke Fraser to kill Zaitsev by saying that he is the only crew member who knows about submarine engines, and if he dies, the submarine will rise to the surface. Fraser has lost his mind and is being influenced by Daniel's words. When they almost make it through the narrow valley, Fraser makes trouble again and ruins their last plan by killing Zaitsev. All the engines stop running instantly, and none of the crew can run the submarine's engines. Daniel tells Robinson that Zaitsev has died after his head hit something, but Robinson believes that Daniel and Fraser have killed him. He really wants to kill Daniel. But he has no other choice but to let him live because he has lost a lot of crew. One of the crew tries to repair the engine, but he fails to do so and instead causes a huge explosion that sends the submarine back to the bottom of the sea. The submarine has a severe leak because it is no longer able to withstand the high pressure on the seabed. Although they'd have fixed the leak, it doesn't work at all because water starts to enter the hull. When Reynolds and Baba try to escape from there, Daniel deliberately closes the hatch and lets them drown. However, Daniel has to accept his karma after his belt gets stuck in the hatch door and he cannot save himself. 
He begs Morozov to help him, but Morozov realizes that Daniel has killed all the crew, so he lets him drown to death. Morozov rushes to the last hatch with Robinson and Tobin, but he is surprised when he sees Robinson taking out the three escape suits that he has kept. Morozov is very disappointed because Robinson didn't tell them all that they had escape suits. However, Robinson tells him and Tobin to quickly put on the escape suits and escape from there, while he will come out using an emergency tube to get him out of the submarine. Morozov realizes that Robinson sacrifices himself for them both because he won't be able to get out without someone pulling the lever. When Tobin intends to bring a bar of gold into his escape suit, Robinson forbids it because the gold is too heavy and the escape suit will not be able to lift it to the surface. When the water starts to enter the last hatch, Robinson immediately puts Tobin and Morozov into torpedo tubes to get them out of there. Tobin finally manages to rise to the surface and is followed by Morozov moments later. They see a land not far away, and Tobin wants to wait for Robinson first. But Morozov tells him that Robinson had lied about the emergency tube because to get out of there, someone had to pull the lever of the torpedo tube. Shortly after, another escape suit appears on the surface, and it turns out that it is not Robinson but gold that was inserted into it by Robinson, along with a photo of his son and ex-wife. Meanwhile, Robinson awaits his death while remembering all the good memories he had with the people he loved the most.